Yeah, I think Tech Tech Talks at 3 p.m. on a given Tuesday, Wednesday. Yeah. Wednesday. Wednesday. Thank you, Attila. That's a, uh, that's Attila Sorens. He runs uh, Silanda, and he's going to talk to us today about um, Revil, R, capital R, capital E, capital B I L, making its mark here on Think Tech Tech Talks. So interesting. So let me give you my impressions, and then you can tell me the reality. Eh? First of all, these guys are very creative. Um, they, you know, have expanded the operation to software as a service. They give you technical support. They pick a piece of the action. It's like a regular business. Um, really creative. And then, you know, in order to avoid the, um, you know, the the option that that a, that a victim would have uh, of um, uh, encrypting data and the like, um, they uh, and, and having a backup, they. They take they take your data also and offer it to the public on auction in order to undermine your business and your brand as well as locking it up. So it's like a two fork approach. What a creative deal! And then of course we need to talk about um, you know what what's going on with Mr. Putin, who seems to have some sort of loose connection uh, with re evil re evil. So um, tell us this is a major major attack. Uh, that was reported, and then and then they went out of business just as fast. Uh, what in the world is going on? You know, this makes you, Attila, more relevant than you ever have been. And it makes the rest of us more scared than we have ever been. Let's talk about it. Well, <clears throat> there's a lot of moving parts here. So you're right, Jay. Uh, this this is something that is, uh, is scary. It does involve data exfiltration. Uh, data exfiltration is when a bad actor gets inside of a network. They take the data and send it out. And that's pretty common, believe it or not. So most of the times, bad actors are sitting inside of networks and they're just waiting for instructions or they're selling access to the network or uh, they're just waiting for the right time, such as what happened with uh, Revil. I'm not sure how to best pronounce that. Maybe you'll have to help me. R-E-V-I-L, Revel, maybe? <clears throat> Anyways. Um, well, probably short for real, real evil. Uh, yeah. So I would say re Revel, Revel myself. In in, uh, in speaking with uh, different members of Homeland Security, they all seem to pronounce it differently. So I don't know who to trust on that. Uh, so I guess if we get hung up on the pronouncement, that's that's uh, that's okay. But um, so uh, this is a supply chain attack, and this is why it's so important. Uh, it's because the victims do, didn't necessarily do anything wrong, right? And uh, as a supply chain attack, uh, unfortunately, they targeted uh, what is called the managed services community, the MSP community. And these guys use tools to service computers for their customers. And that tool was, uh, was uh, unfortunately, what, what was the uh, part of the supply chain attack. And if you want to kind of go back through a series of events, it might help you understand what's going on here and why this does fall into the profile of uh, Revel and uh, what, um, you know, which is why it made perfect sense for them to pursue this avenue. So. Uh, probably about a month ago, a, uh, a, a security researcher out of Europe somewhere discovered a zero-day exploit with Microsoft Windows. And it involved the print spooler. It was called the uh, print nightmare. And the security researcher said, hey, you know, I found something. Let me just put it on GitHub. <laughs> and GitHub, as you know, is an open source community where you can post code. And uh, bad actors uh, at Revel said, this is just what we needed. And what they instead did was they, they used that vulnerability to infect, right, the, the RMM tool. RMM is short for Remote Monitoring and Management. And uh, Kaseya is one of the more prevalent vendors that does this. As such, uh, they have MSPs, right? So their clients are IT companies who are highly technical and are very offended by this, by the way. So this is, this is big news in the IT community. Right. And then they that took me the worst of it being offended. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> well, and 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 that and that uh, that became a real problem because there's a lot of trust between the IT, right, who essentially has these, you know, godlike overlord powers over your network and the customer. Right. And these customers are everything from small companies like, you know, dental offices and small medical offices and dog groomers. Right. Everything all the way up to Fortune 500. And defense and, contractors included. 
Yes, uh, that they are in there as well. And unfortunately, this is unlike the Solar Winds attack, which was very similar. It was a supply chain attack, but in Solar Winds's case, their product Orion was specifically installed and marketed towards defense industry contractors. So that 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 was the big problem there, is because it did involve a lot of of uh, monitoring for a long period of time. And they knew about the issue for quite a while. And of course, no one's talking about solar winds anymore, but what are you gonna do, right? Um, everyone's now moved on to Kaseya. <clears throat> now Kaseya, um, their patch management servers uh, were then infected by this uh, zero day exploit. And the, uh, the guys at Revel made a very smart update. To all the Kaseya clients, all the ones out there. And they pushed out this update and they deployed it on a very small number. Now, when I say a very small number, that was over a million computers uh, on hundreds of businesses. And they said, if you want your machines back, we want a ransom of $70 million. So seven zero. So that was the largest ransomware demand to date. Hmm. So what do you think happened to these poor managed services companies that were stuck in the middle, right? They built up trust with these, uh, these companies and all these uh, offices. And... They, they went out and uh, had to try to mitigate this bug, which they had introduced to these, uh, to these networks in the first place. And uh, so there's a major uproar on that. There was uh, you know, well over a million devices encrypted and demanding a ransom, and it infected uh, 70 million was for one or, uh, or for the whole lot of them? For the whole lot of them, yeah. So they were demanding that on sale. Now, luckily, IT people are pretty resourceful, so... I, I believe that many of those systems were, you know, emergency patched, or, or should I say, emergency recovered. And in the meanwhile, those that were not uh, encrypted were emergency patched with Microsoft's uh, CVE. So that uh, Microsoft did release, uh, I believe, it was four uh, security updates. And uh, unfortunately, we're discovering that some of those updates are uh, bricking computers. They're disabling or destroying the ability for that computer to print. So machines are having to be reimaged. There's a lot going on in the IT world in the background to to try to uh, scramble and get machines patched that are uh, you know to to keep them from uh, you know continuing to be uh, you know exploitable, and this really highlights how a supply chain attack and a zero day put together can really mess up uh, the community. Now, um, you know the uh, the print nightmare bug. Uh, as it's been called, has been something that IT departments have been scrambling all week long to try to patch. On like pretty much every every Windows system has this bug out there, and uh, they're discovering now that there's problems with um, specific print manufacturers, uh, such as like say like Zebra receipt printers or uh, barcode readers. These kind of things break sometimes when the print subsystem gets replaced in a in a rushed and emergency fashion, is what Microsoft's been having to do, but. That zero-day exploit, unfortunately, does give root backdoor access to the system, and it's uh, it's not good. And that security researcher who messed this all up for everyone should not have published their findings uh, on GitHub, and it wouldn't have spawned all this uh, all these problems from happening. Now, let me let me unpack some of that before we go sure. any further. <laughs> so, how does this um, how does this um, uh, get processed as ransomware? Um, how, does, how does this bug, this vulnerability, turn into a ransomware scenario? Well, once you have backdoor access to a system, you got lots of choices. Ransomware is kind of the quick, dirty, and simplest way to to get that to get a malicious payload out there and make some money. Uh, Revel evidently does not have nation state ties. Evidently, uh, you know, obviously is, is in Russia, and but they're for they're a for profit organization. And that's fine, um, but you know they they moved very quickly to take advantage of this exploit. They knew that the highest impact would be from uh, Kaseya, and unfortunately, <clears throat> the news now, <clears throat> and and this is probably I think the bigger problem, Jay. And I think we should really focus on this: is that several whistleblowers have come forth from Kaseya over the past year plus, well documented, and either after they. Uh, you know, wrote up a very long and extensive brief indicating that there's a security vulnerability with the company, or that there's poor, uh, there's not best practices being uh, performed at these companies. They are either fired or they're silenced. So uh, the same thing happened with Solar Winds. Uh, they knew well in advance that there was a security problem at their organization. 
They did nothing about it. So that that's a real problem because that's what can prevent this from happening next time. Because, you know, uh, I guess the best analogy to this entire incident is uh, that it's a storm, much like what we have to deal with here in Hawaii. We have storms. You cannot stop the storm from coming, but you can improve your resiliency against that storm when it inevitably comes. And that's what we should really be focusing on is how as as individual business owners or business operators or IT departments, how do we maximize our company's resiliency to the next supply chain, to the next whatever attack that's going to inevitably come? Well, this is so then, much here to talk about. I can tell you. So, what what kind of what kind of um, you know warnings, early warnings did they they have? Uh, you know, to sort of foretell of um, this 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 fellow who revealed the vulnerability only a, a few days ago. How, how, how do they know that so that uh, they should have been, uh, since they wrote their warning memoranda to their companies and so the companies could have done anything about it? Um, what, what did they find? What was, the, what was the weakness they found? Look, people don't take cybersecurity seriously until there's an incident. You know this, I know this, right? When do people buy uh, a security system for their home or for their business? After there's been a break-in, right? <laughs> And in the same way, there's not a lot that's 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 considered beforehand. And Kaseya, and I hate to say it, you know, we we've had to deal with them on different occasions for different products of so theirs. They're they're, they're like a, a printing software company. Is that what they are? Or what I would call them more like a like a Pac-Man of the managed services world. Uh, they buy up companies that they think might fill a need or are generating revenue, and and they just add it to their portfolio. Mm-hmm. Solar Winds is no different, by the way. And that's a pretty common trade in, in big corporate America, right? You know, you, you have the big guy buying up the little guys. That's their part of their strategy is acquisition. Um, yeah. You know, it's, it's been like that for a long time. Well, that's not going to change. But what really should change is how seriously they take their own cybersecurity, knowing that they are so responsible for so many businesses and lives. I don't look at a company as, you know, this this money machine or, or a vet's office or a dentist's office. I look at it as someone's livelihood that then supports the community, which then pays for schools and pays for roads and everything that we depend upon. So when you attack a business like that due to gross negligence from a big corporate entity that's just more interested in um, you know policies and procedures rather than protecting the community or uh, for which they are responsible for, then, then that, that's really what is, uh, is upsetting to a lot of those uh, such as myself who are in the IT space who have to uh, try to mitigate some of the fallout. Now, luckily- well, uh, What could the executives could, could, what could the executives in those, that company, those companies do if they read the memorandum? Um, if they took the warning, what could they have done to prevent against this? Well, in, as in most things, there's always a solution, right? You don't have- just but, a problem. But nobody, with no knew, solution. nobody knew about the Microsoft vulnerability <clears throat> until recently. You know, it only came to light a short time ago. You're talking about memoranda that were written a year ago or whatever. Well, they, it was clear that they were following poor uh, security policies, right? I mean, they had to get inside the server somehow. Uh, there, there were some issues with um, there were some issues with uh, with how they were maintaining their existing staff. Uh, there, were, it's all kind of laid out in there. The, the specifics haven't been revealed, but what they are saying is that there have been several whistleblowers who came out and said, "Look, guys, we really need to do something about this. There is a real security risk. Uh, we are responsible for a lot of people's livelihoods. When I say a lot, I mean in the millions. And right. our product is vulnerable. We need to do something about this. Now, in Solar Winds, it was really obvious, right? Their password to their main server was Solar Winds one two three. Kind of easy to guess. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> That's ridiculous. <laughs> you know, so, okay. So, Google so it. <laughs> yeah, really. So you have this, um, and, and, and uh, you know, the newspaper would suggest there was an awful lot of, a lot of, a lot of companies tied up in ransomware scenarios. Um, and and uh, are we out of the woods on that? You know, I mean, the less we forget that, uh, that Joe Biden had a telephone call about the, this large ransomware attack, 
by Revel or Revel or Revel or whatever, um, a few days ago, only a week ago or so. Um, and, uh, you know, of course, uh, Vladimir Putin did not admit that he knew about it or it was his fault or anything. But, you know, in Russia, you know, Putin knows. Putin has connections. It's a capital concentration or intellectual concentration or certainly a computer nastiness like this. He knows. And so remarkably, less than a week after that, uh, their, uh, their website came down. And now they're not they're not available for hacking as a service anymore. And their whole business is like disappeared, although we all know it'll probably reappear soon enough. But what about the guys whose beta was kidnapped? Where what about the guys who was suffered? They, if, if the site went down, if Regal isn't in business anymore, who do they call to get their data back? So data exfiltration is uh is one. One piece of the puzzle, and the second is decryption. Data exfiltration, uh, as far as I know, there's been no evidence of data exfiltration. I could be incorrect on that, probably worth Googling that. Um, but data exfiltration is when they actually take the customer's data and they either publish it or hold it for ransom uh, outside of the customer's network. And that could be uh, independent of ransomware de being deployed. And so it, it can go both ways. Uh, in this circumstance, I believe it was just a smash and grab uh, quick ransomware, sloppy deployment. Uh, luckily, since most managed services companies already have a good disaster recovery plan in place for their customers, uh, those that were affected were able to be brought back online. Uh, or if, if they weren't, then, you know, a great expense to the managed services company, the man in the middle, uh, they had to do what they could to get that business back up. But, you know, like I said, this is just, uh, uh, you know, magnifies a problem that already exists in our in our in our in our world. Uh, this is not unique. We see it a lot. <laughs> it sucks. Uh, it's not great. But you know, in order to be successful at your business, you got to suck at one thing first, because the SUC is at the beginning of the word success, right? So you got to have a good, successful business uh, 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 a business uh, disaster recovery plan, business continuity plan. And that's going to allow you to weather any storm that comes your way. Uh, and, and these are things well, that... Is that, is that what, if, if, so if I have a little company or mm -hmm. a medium-sized company, and I was um, you know, attacked by something coming from Regal or Revel, um, then if I had backup, then I could get back online. And the problem with the, the, the printer software really wouldn't make too much difference to me because I, I'd use the Microsoft patches. I'd get my, you know, my data back because I have it encrypted somewhere safe. Uh, end of the story. Uh, am I right about that, or are there people left high and dry on this? It's a little bit of both. Hard to tell at this point because there's just so many victims. But those that took advantage of cloud services most likely have their data. Uh, those that outsourced uh, certain parts of their operation for uh, specific things. So, uh, for example. Uh, they subscribe to a software as a service, like uh, like Adobe, uh, instead of purchasing an uh, you know an individual licensed copy and then losing that installation file. Right, that, that's really easy to restore if they're a subscriber of Office 365 and they are in a plan which includes the software. It's very easy to just wipe the system or re-image it and then bring it back online and download the software and you're back up and running very quickly. So uh, the good news is that part of uh, COVID has forced us to be more uh, nimble and cloud dependent. And so when something like this does happen, it's a lot easier to then recover versus, uh, you know, having extended downtime. So it just really well, depends. Well, conceptually, if, as long as I keep my data safe in a backup, uh, I'd say an encrypted backup probably best, then I can come back again. I, I would not be affected by this. This is really uh, awful what happened, but uh, the prepared companies will, will have survived. Others, maybe, maybe not, because, you know, it's not like you can pick up the phone and negotiate with somebody who went offline and disappeared into the Ukraine somewhere. Um, so, okay, so uh, the other thing I wanted to ask you about is this. You know, ever hear of entrapment? Uh, it's when, you know, government, uh, you know, police or prosecute, prosecuting authorities uh, will make like, uh, you know, they are engaged in the crime uh, with the other criminal um, and they'll suck them in and they'll deceive you know, the other person, uh, they'll even talk like a criminal. Um, and in the, in the process, they're gathering information so as to prosecute, arrest and prosecute. 
And in this case, what's happened here is really a step forward. Tell me if I'm wrong. Um, these guys very creative. Now they're offering it as a service. You can go on the website, at least until recently. Um, you can you can bring the software down. You can be a criminal in a matter of seconds. You can go be a criminal overnight. And I'm sure that some kids in this country, some adults too, um, you know, would have done that. And then, of course, you have to share your ill-gotten gains with them. There's a lot of contact. I mean, there's a lot of contact interaction between the, the, the customer, so to speak, the, who gets the you know, criminal software and the one who gives them the criminal software, Revil. And so that leaves a lot of opportunity for the FBI or somebody who would engage in this kind of, uh, entrap is the right word, because, wrong word, because entrapment is Ill, itself illegal. Um, but some kind of situation where they suck them in, deceive them, and then nail them. Um, isn't it easier with this software as a service model to bring the criminal in and nail him? Well, the, you know, to be fair, Revil is just one of many. Um, you know, in fact, I believe it was April of last year, uh, there was another uh, shutdown, uh, let's see, of, of another large scale, you know, software, to, uh, you know, ransomware as a service and and uh, you know, cybercrime as a service type of organization, and they just pop right back up. This is not going away. This is this is not you know. These are like mushrooms. They you just chop them down and then they pop right back up again. It's because well, it is yes, yes, but, yeah. but they they're more advanced every time you look. Each mm -hmm. generation of uh, mushrooms has new and creative tricks, like this thing about taking your data also and auctioning it. Um, and you know, the other thing I wanted to. Uh, I want to ask you about it. You said before you didn't think that, that Putin had any connection with them, don't you? I mean, doesn't it seem like he may? I mean, there's a remarkable coincidence here. A week after, um, you know, this, this contentious uh, conversation between Biden and Putin, the thing goes offline. Now, I guess some commentators would say, well, it was, it was subjective. Uh, Revel decided that uh, there was too much heat, heat coming from, obviously, the U.S., but also from Putin himself. Uh, and um, they, they decided the better part of valor here would be to disappear like a mushroom and come up later. What do you think happened there? And, and is there any issue at all about them coming up later? They'll be back. Give them a few days or a week. They'll be back and they'll be even more creative. Am I right? You're right. And uh, the, the one I referenced earlier was TrickBot. So if you want to Google TrickBot, you'll see it's the same thing. It's uh, ransomware as a service. It's business email compromises as a service. Uh, they make a they make a product. People pay for it. They use it. They infiltrate, right? Um, and uh, when Microsoft shut down their networks back in back last year, April, I believe. Uh, well, what happened? A few months later, they came back stronger than ever. So there's going to be a trick bot. There's going to be another Revolt 2.0. Uh, they just come. They just go. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't count on these folks going away. And yeah, to to answer your question about uh, whether there's any sort of politics involved. Perhaps. I mean, I don't think I'm qualified to say yes or no. I'm not even sure uh, anyone in, in law enforcement or FBI or Homeland Security may have the answers to that either. It's, it's hard to tell. But you, uh, must, but you must think about where they are. There must be telltale signs about where they are, about how well, for example, they write and speak the language. Um, you think they're in Russia? Do you think they're in Eastern Europe? Do you think they're in Asia? Um, you know, I've always felt that Siberia was a good place for them. Um, you know, like Vladivostok and all that could be anywhere. But but you guys, and I say you guys, I mean people in the industry must have some idea, even by way of rumor, about where these guys are and who they are. Well, well, post incident response and evaluation, sometimes you do discover who's in there. And for instance, in the uh, case of uh, Solar Winds, right, which wasn't that long ago. I know everyone thinks it's ancient history, but that was just like six months tops. You know, uh, they were inside. But uh, you know, everyone's pointing the, f the finger at Russia. But then it turns out that once China got wind of it, they were in there too, watching what was going on. So who knows how many uh, advanced persistent threat actors there could be, or nation states that are out there uh, looking in all these networks and and finding vulnerabilities and taking their time. Uh, that's the other thing about this uh, this Kaseya attack. Uh, there could still be infected machines out there, and they could do a second wave. I mean, this was just over the July Fourth weekend, right? They de deployed it on a Friday. Yeah. Friday morning uh, before. I mean, it could very easily 
uh, happen later, right? This is not uh, this is not over, and I don't think That's it's going true. to be over in, anytime soon. So, what about uh, the success of the FBI for recovering half of what was paid in the Colonial Pipeline uh, hack uh, a month ago? Uh, they they seem to be successful in getting half of it back. Did anything that they learned or demonstrate that they found in that case uh, help the community deal with this going forward? Did they discover a new way of dealing with ransomware? I really do like the fact that they chose to spend eight hundred thousand dollars more than they had to to pay with Bitcoin versus Ethereum. So Bitcoin has a better uh, what's the best word paper trail uh, uh, along the uh, blockchain. So they were able to work with the FBI and get some of that back, which was good. Um, Ethereum is less so. And um, I believe, I believe, if I remember right, their operational cost was something like $400 million a day. So, you know, a few million bucks here or there <laughs> was, uh, was a lot less impactful uh, to their pocketbook than having the whole system shut down. And well, is that, is that yeah. lesson that we learned with the FBI and Colonial Pipeline going to be useful? Or, or is it so, you know, it's just run off uh, the hackers' backs and it, it doesn't affect their ability to do this, in fact, do it better um, at all? Uh, did, 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 did that change things? Did it Absolutely. reach some sort of tipping point? Absolutely. You're, you're, you're asking the right question. What can we learn from a colonial pipeline attack and how does it apply here? Well, guess what? Colonial pipeline attack, they paid the ransom. What happened? They got a decryption. You haven't had to deal with uh, post ransomware and decryption software, but it's not like you know nice production value software. It's really garbage, and it doesn't work very well to decrypt stuff. So what did the Colonial Pipeline do? They said, "Heck with it. We're going back to our backups," and they had a good business continuity plan in place. So even though they did the negotiation, they went through all the rigmarole, they paid the ransom. It still didn't help them. Having that business continuity plan, getting everything back up and running, uh, was was what was the saving grace. That's what saved their their hide. And so we can all learn from that, especially uh, with this uh, latest uh, supply chain attack. Well, you know, it seems to me that um, you know this is a soft target uh, because you can be anywhere. You can get, even if you don't have even if you don't have any skills in uh, in coding, you can take it off one of these uh, hacking as a as a as a service websites, which I'm sure that as you said, there are others, and Revo will be back. Um, and you can do this, um, and, and and every time they have this, you know, big number type of ransomware news headline, it, the, the price goes up, and you can make more extravagant demands every time, and and more people can get involved. There's like no limit because you know nobody got arrested in Colonial Pipeline. Nobody was actually identified. They got they got half of it back, but that doesn't really uh, float my boat. Because it, these guys are still impugned. That wherever they are, they're completely impugned. Nobody ever got caught, prosecuted, convicted, or punished in any way. So it just seems to me that as a global process here, this is just, <clears throat> it's set to expand and expand and expand until there are sanctions, until there's accountability. And so far, no accountability. So my question to you, Attila, of course, Business has got to, you know, business has got to take steps, and you know, companies like yours can help them. But there'll be more businesses involved, more damage involved, presumably more destruction of the economy if somebody wants to do that, uh, and nobody is stopping them. What's the future of this? Well, the future for sure is 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 right now. The problems that you're describing, uh, out of out of control ransom uh, ransomware. Um, you know, bad actors out there destroying networks. That's happening today as we speak. In fact, probably during our conversation, probably a bunch of networks got taken down. So you got to, like you mentioned, you got to hire the right people to come in and, and help you uh, be resilient against these kind of things. You have a clientele here in Hawaii, Nay, who were victims of this? Uh, I'm sorry, what, Hawaii you Tell have, is being victim? Have, no, you were... You were you have clientele here in the state of Hawaii who were victims. Well, I, I'm not at liberty to, to name names, but I can tell you for sure, we are not immune here in Hawaii. I knew you'd say that, and to me, it sounds reasonable. There are no barriers, no borders. You know why not? You know, it actually would be fun 
there is a sense of humor involved, which you know leads me to believe these guys are not only creative but young. I mean, for example, I and I thought it was really cute that in in the latest version of the ransomware uh, software, uh, as available then from Re Reveal the website, um, there was a trial a trial period uh, where uh, uh, they would they would take your 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 data or lock it up. And then if you were in the trial period, I signed up for it, in the trial period, you could unlock it just so that it would be demonstrated to you that the, um, the unlock uh, aspect of the ransomware worked. That's so cute. They got that from all these trial versions of software that we see all day long. It's like a business. It's like a creative little business that comes and goes. And they get, they get a, a substantial percentage of what you recover in your, you know, your ill-gotten gains. If you get a million dollars, there's some kind of oddball deal uh, where they get a part of that. That is the reveal types. They get a part of what you recover. Um, I, I tell you, put me on the jury, Attila. Put me on the jury. I, I, will, I will do what has to be done. But we haven't seen any juries. We haven't seen any prosecutions. So my question, my last question to you is, with all the knowledge that we have, that you have, about you know, the, the vulnerabilities and the way these guys conduct their mm, intrusion into the networks, um, do, we, do we have a way, some way to identify them and go out there and arrest? They could be doing this from Moili Ili, not Ukraine. Let's assume for this discussion they are doing it from Moili Ili in a little one bedroom apartment. So, query can we identify them? Can we bring them to justice, or is it just impossible? And, you know, leaving us as, um, you know, totally globally uh, vulnerable. Well, hopefully, our friends at the FBI are not listening because. Uh... They are very interested to find out if there's any um, bad actors here on island uh, because it is criminal, of course. So uh, I would venture to say that, you know, you're right. Uh, we don't know who they are. Uh, and I'm also going to say that you're right. Uh, you know, you, you got to do something about this. So everyone knows what to do. Everyone knows how to lose weight. But if you, it's the action that makes the difference. Everyone knows how to keep their business secure. But it's the action. It's the decisions that matter. So until you change people's behavior, we're going to keep having overweight people. Or we're going to keep having cybersecurity incidents unless you hire a professional. Last question. You know, there are other professionals who might be interested in this conversation, namely lawyers. OK, so if I'm damaged by this and there is a, you know, a smoking gun kind of whistleblower memo out there and I find it. Uh, doesn't it seem clear that the company who ignored the whistleblower, the company who knew or should have known about a vulnerability and did nothing, has a enormous, even total liability to me for failing to protect me? Well, that, that brings up a good point. And it reminds me of GM's gross negligence uh, back in the early 2000s with their, uh, with their safety belts, I believe, or... Yeah, I'm not sure. They had something. Uh, reminds me of, uh, of pharmaceuticals that have had this numerous times. Reminds me of uh, food manufacturers that have had E. coli and they knew about it. Uh, this is not a unique circumstance. It just happens to affect computers. You're right. You're right. But we have to we have to think along those lines, though, <laughs> because as a community, <laughs> we can't let this happen. So what are your closing suggestions to the public who may say in response to this conversation, I'm too small, I don't care. They're never gonna care about me. Well, this is systematized, so no one is immune. And if any indicator on the news uh, you know, gives you any sort of direction, just know it's not, not a matter of uh, if, but when. Uh, just like living here in Hawaii, we can expect storms. This is a way of life, and it's part of the risks that we uh, take on, uh, deciding to live in the most isolated landmass on the planet. You're going to have storms, you're going to have weather, and the best thing that you can do is prepare, 
and be resilient. And uh, there's lots of resources to do this. Uh, there's many community resources now being uh, pushed out by the SBA. In fact, uh, uh, we have some good friends and relationships there at the SBA. Uh, they have some good cyber resources there. Uh, more and more uh, uh, IT professionals are becoming cyber aware and security aware. Uh, you know, speak with your cyber professional, uh, or should I say your IT professional, to see what the limits of their uh, knowledge are on these kind of things. We work uh, pretty uh, extensively with in-house IT teams to help augment their capability and make them look good because uh, sometimes there's just too much uh, to be covered uh, by a single IT person. You do need a professional. Now, who would have ever thought that uh, this becomes so important in our world and important for coverage here at ThinkTech? So I feel confident and hopeful Attila, that you and I will be speaking again because there'll be some other crisis along a similar lines going forward. I look forward to a continuing relationship with you. I'm glad to help. I think the last time we talked about something was just a few weeks ago. So, you know, just a matter of time. Okay. Thank you, Attila. Yes, Attila Sarras, Silanda. Really appreciate it. Aloha. Thanks, guys. Stay safe out there.